So it seems like Yotsuba has won, but I wouldn't celebrate just yet. Remember that a similar situation occurred when people believed Itsugi was Lolicano in chapter 77. Now to get something straight before I go any further, if Yotsuba has indeed won and I was ultimately wrong, then that's fine with me. I'm not going to find ways to deny anything I said, at the end of the day I enjoy making those theories and I regret nothing. That being said, there's something that bothers me about this situation. There are actually a couple of things, so first, I'll start with the current decision from the latest chapter. If what we see here is straightforward, then Yotsuba has won because she is Lolicano. And before you jump to conclusions, please let me explain myself. The chapter itself was leading into a Yotsuba spotlight from the beginning, especially since Futara noticed those two girls talking about the resting area which Yotsuba put together. This early emphasis on Yotsuba suggests that she'll be the highlight of the chapter. But the most important thing is when Takeda asked Futaro which quint did he recognize first. My mind jumped straight to the scrambled eggs arc, precisely this panel right here. And here's the issue. This panel was used to appear as a joke, while at the same time holding a little hint implying that Futaro recognized Yotsuba right away. In other words, it was vague, but clever, very clever, and I can only applaud Neji for this. But, as we're being told, Sama needs love to distinguish the quint. Therefore, Futaro had love for Yotsuba, right? Let me take you back to chapter 21, when Futaro was able to tell Yotsuba was lying without any effort. To cut Futaro's words, Yotsuba, you suck at lying. But we know for a fact that she isn't a terrible liar, that she's quite capable and was able to fool everyone around her except Futaro. Yotsuba herself says it in her flashback to the Seven Goodbyes arc. I recently found I cannot lie well. Futaro would see right through her disguise. What all of this means, if it wasn't obvious by now, is that Futaro always loved Yotsuba, consciously or not. That's how he could always find the real her. That's why he says there's something odd about Yotsuba, because he can see the reality of her disguise. But my problem with this is also the same problem I mentioned in my previous video. If Futaro was already having things for Yotsuba as early as chapter 21, of course it could have been even earlier than that, then what's the point of the story? When I say feelings, they don't have to be conscious feelings, Futaro doesn't need to be aware of them. The fact that he could see through Yotsuba, consciously or not, means she was special to him, even if he doesn't acknowledge it. Therefore, this story was ultimately about finding a long lost love. The other queens were never an option, they never represented a romantic interest. And this may still sound alright, but wait until Itsuki enters the scene. Unless I'm wrong here, and if I am, please let me know, because I don't want to belittle this. Now, even if the long lost love was the actual point of the story, there's still a major unsolved plot point. Yotsuba's character has mainly two significant issues, which also represent her plot points. One is the promise she made to Futaro and the fact that she has failed it, and the second is this imaginary self-implied debt she holds for her sisters. While the first issue has been partially solved during her side chapters, the second issue hasn't even been touched. Right now, she is still under the mentality that her sisters are more deserving of Futaro. During her flashback chapters, my sisters and I, a certain boy and I, we learned that she couldn't reveal her identity to Futaro when she met him as a teenager because she has failed their promise. But she tells herself that if she keeps studying her hardest, it would maybe be alright to tell Futaro about herself. Meaning that she has found her happiness again and was thrilled at the idea that she could finally be reunited with Futaro. That maybe her life wasn't a disaster and she could still reach for her happiness, but when she finds out that her sisters are also interested in him, it becomes a mess. Even if she succeeded in her studies, she still wouldn't be able to reveal herself because she feels indebted to her sisters. It becomes a lose-lose situation for her and she forces herself to forget about her memories. Now comes the festival and with the help of Takebayashi and Futaro, she manages to put the failed promise behind her. Meaning that it's no longer relevant whether or not she has become the person she wished to. As a quick note here, I think this should have been approached differently and really tackled with more depth. 
after all it's Yotsuba's core problem. It felt pretty rushed and I'm not truly satisfied with how it was handled, but regardless, it reached some sort of closure. But her side chapter didn't address this second major issue, the debt she holds for her sisters. In the sisters' war arc, she and Futaro have a very interesting conversation about making everyone happy, to what Futaro replies by saying how naive of a view it is and how eventually everything comes down to a single selfish choice. When you choose something, it means not choosing something else. If Futaro's line isn't obvious enough, if Yotsuba chooses her sister's happiness, it means she's not choosing Futaro. Therefore, if she wants Futaro, she would need to be selfish about it. This entire panel says it all. The time will come when Yotsuba will have to make a final decision. An important thing in all this is that Yotsuba was determined to pursue her love and improve herself after she met Futaro again, but gave up on this idea when she noticed her sisters fell for him. Because of this self-implied debt, she placed her sister's happiness way above her own. Until this issue is addressed, Yotsuba may not even accept Futaro if she's his choice. She still feels like her sisters would deserve Futaro more than her. Therefore, this issue would need to be addressed to give each sister a fair chance. The core thing about this is that Yotsuba has to make a choice. She'll have to prioritize her happiness and there has to be some sort of reasoning behind it. If she simply accepts Futaro's decision, that will kind of leave a weird plot hole. Long story short, I wouldn't put my party hat yet, I would wait for another chapter. Next, I would like to touch a bit on the drinks. I am a bit salty at the idea that Neji didn't give us a way to figure out which drink Futaro chose before it was revealed to us. There were no hints pointing towards his choice unless, of course, I missed something, or if Futaro looking at a vending machine in Yotsuba's side was meant to be a hint, but that's very loose. And when I tried the good old fashioned deduction technique, I found way too many inconsistencies which made it impossible to figure out the drink. I mainly mean drawing inconsistencies. Like in this panel, there is this big bubble speech, but we can see that under it, it's his left hand. At first glance, it appears as though the bubble speech was used to hide whatever was in his left hand, or used to imply he has a drink in his left hand, when in reality it was in his right hand all along. But the thing here is that we can see his pinky with the nail. The nail is essential here because it faces down, meaning his palm is facing Ichika. If you're thinking that's his thumb and not pinky, take a look at the nail. If it were the thumb, then the nail would be facing upwards. So why was his palm aimed at Ichika? Why was it facing her? If he held nothing in it. Futaro never positioned his hand this way before, especially when it was empty. If you say that the drink was in his left hand at first and then he picked it with his right, just look at the latter half of chapter 102. The drink was always in his right hand. That's one thing, but there's also something fishy in regards to the drinks that Ichika listed. She labels Nino as black tea, seems alright, Miku green tea, matcha soda of course, Yotsuba juice, sure it fits, and Itsuki... coffee? Wait, 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 this isn't right. Ichika lists Itsuki as coffee, but we know for a fact that coffee is Ichika's favorite drink. We see her drinking coffee four times in the manga, but we do not see Itsuki favoring coffee. She drinks it once, when Maro orders one for her in chapter 54, but she would eat and drink almost anything, so it doesn't really count, especially when there's already some emphasis on Ichika and coffee. In the introduction page for the Queens from volume 7, Itsuki's favorite drink is listed as curry flavored soda. At first, I thought this was a joke, right? Curry soda, what the heck is that? But then, um, well, Japan is quite big on curry soda, it's actually very common there. So, why would the Nichika list Itsuki as curry soda? It may sound silly and not fit quite well, which is what I thought at first, but it actually fits. Everyone knows Itsuki eats a lot. Futaro knows, her sister know, we know, hence he wouldn't feel weird if Ichika said it. Sure, it might have made Futaro chuckle a bit, although he knows Itsuki is crazy for curry since she devoured Raiha's curry on several occasions, so she would give him a specific choice nonetheless. We should also keep in mind that this is a manga, a work of fiction, 
so saying that the vending machine didn't have curry soda doesn't make much sense. On the other hand, Futara could have picked the juice for two other reasons. We know he doesn't like bitter drinks. Coffee, black tea and green tea are all bitter. And there's also the fact that orange juice is Raiha's favorite drink. Oh my god, that means... But the biggest puzzlement for me is why did Ichika even show up and pose as a choice at the end of the festival? And this will be an even bigger issue when it comes to Ituki. But more on that later. Now, since Ichika knew he picked Juice, therefore picked Yotsuba, it makes little sense for her to pose as a choice. I mean, sure, we could argue that she had hoped Futaro would change his mind after she kissed him, but is that really a strong plausible reason? This entire weird quintuplets and holding fingers at the end of chapter 112 feels so odd. On the grand scheme we know that Nino, Miku, Ichika and Yotsuba have a conscious desire to be chosen. They made it clear. Sure, Yotsuba and Ichika don't have such high hopes, but they voice their desire to be chosen through their monologue. However, Itsuki doesn't show it. She doesn't have that I want Futaro to choose me. Yet, she is a part of it and waits for his decision just like her sisters. And this has got me thinking. If Futaro were to reject the first four sisters, then they would have to cope with that rejection. It would feel devastating, but the rejection in itself would be an important experience, maybe even overcoming a milestone, especially for Nino, Miku and Yotsuba who revolve so much around Futaro. And even for Ichika, although it would probably not feel as devastating for her. But for Itsuki? Quite frankly, her possible rejection would be tensionless. She wouldn't learn anything from it, nor would she have to cope with it. Rejection for Itsuki will have no real consequences compared to her sisters. And that makes me wonder, what was her purpose in all this? I'm not referring to her purpose in the festival arc, but her purpose in the entire manga. At this moment it feels... weird. Like she was with one foot in the mystery bucket, and with the other foot in the dirt bucket. Anyway, I guess Nino and Miku are officially out. I don't really like how Neji handled their situations, but it's still early to make a statement since we should or might get some reasoning from Futaro. Okay, I never thought Miku was going to win, but man, this right here hurts in a weird way. But the biggest question mark still lies with Itsuki. Before I end this video, I want to address the big elephant in the room which sits on the entire festival arc. It seems Futaro is aware of who he really wants to pick on the first day of the festival. The reason he didn't otherwise say it, presumably, because he wanted to keep the same relationship with everyone as long as he could. If that's the case, then these latest events wouldn't make him change his mind. And not only that, but what has been bugging me for a while is what happened ever since chapter 68. Debatable or not, we know from chapter 68 that from that very moment there was a winner. Futaro made it clear that it was from that moment on, his future bride became special to him. Neji has leveled the field and made it even now with the sides for each quint, but only for us, the readers. Therefore, Futaro's decision really only depends on events before chapter 68. I know this is not a fun way to view the story, but I can't deny it's always on my mind. With that being said, I'm eagerly waiting for the next chapter. I do still have some interesting things I want to talk about in regards to the bell keys and what Neji said in his latest interview, but I don't know when that will come out. At the end of the day, if in the next chapter we get undeniable proof for Yotsuba, then congratulations to the Yotsuburos who had faith in their choice for so long. I really don't have a problem with Yotsuba winning, she deserves happiness, I'm just not satisfied with how Neji handles certain aspects of the story. With that being said, I'm thankful for the support you guys have given me and I'm happy you found my videos enjoyable. Thank you. And stop demanding my pinky guys, remember that the present is more important than the past, right? Can I please pull a Yotsuba, fail my promise and then move on?